Some knives give you an outdoor bushcrafty feel. Some knives give you a tactical feel when you look at them. But sometimes those two styles intersect. Today we're going to be looking at the Lothar KA-52. This is a knife that I believe exists in all of those worlds. But I think it has a really attractive tactical look to it. Stick around. Recently, I reviewed a knife from Odin Wolf that I believe looks a lot like this one. It's packaged a lot like this one. But the one that I reviewed from Odin Wolf, just in its appearance, would give you more of a get out in the woods type of look. This one right here just looks like a fighting knife. Yes, it's a bushcraft blade designed to do a lot of the same things as far as the survival realm is concerned, but that's tack black all the way. So if you are following my channel on a regular and you're watching my knife reviews and you're trying to figure out you know, which one you like the best, well, you're gonna be able to size these two videos up. They're built almost the exact same way. They're both D2 steel. They both have a very similar size and dynamic. One just looks a lot more tactical and it's this one, even though this does have a ferro rod with it, which is really neat as well. We have a four and a half inch harpoon style blade. I love that blade shape. I can't say that enough. And we have some very grippy G10 scales here. As you can tell, that's a very, very grippy surface. Now the, the jimping here is on the handle. So we're gonna be scraping with the spine and I've already taken some of the top layer off there. Yeah, it's throwing a good spark. Now this sheath has a very unique look to it. Nice kydex, but it's kind of got like a checkerboard pattern there. And this does lock in extremely well. And your ferro rod goes in here, but it's secured with this little string. So you just kind of tighten it down right there. Nice system, tech lock, which can be carried upright or you can turn it around to carry this scout across the back. Now this has got a nice black coated blade here, but you're gonna screw that up the moment that you start using it. I mean, I struck the ferro rod a few times and boom, all of its beauty's gone. And the more you actually use this, the more all of that's gonna just get scraped off eventually. But, you know, being able to use it's the most important thing. Now, I don't have paper, but, you know, I've got some hair to shave, and as you can tell, it's doing that. Now, most of these knives come with this additional paracord here. Uh, I'm not a fan of it. I take it off every time. It gets in my way. On a side, kind of a funny note, whenever I'm in the woods like this on a cloudy day talking about knives, it reminds me of two movies. Number one, First Blood, and number two, The Hunted. I love them both. When I'm out here in the woods like this, I like to be armed, but I also like to be armed with a good, strong, solid, all-purpose blade. Because when we think about our knife in a combative sense, not all attackers are human. Sometimes they're our furry friends out here. And I'm talking 100% self-defense survival context. Your Lothar KA-52 here is appropriate for such task. Let's do a little something different in this video. Let's just say that you're in a situation where you have to make a hike through the woods. It could be a very unexpected thing, something sudden, an emergency where you're having to travel on foot somewhere. One thing I would suggest if you don't already have one is to make yourself a survival spear, just like a walking stick, but yet have a point on the end of it. There's all kinds of ways this can benefit you. If you were in a situation, you had a good knife, you had the ability to make one, it's good to have something like that to trek with. Let's make one real quick on the fly. Just find you something nice and straight, just like this. Now, I can baton or I can just do a little chopping here. This is a situation where I would chop with a knife. This is not too big of a limb. I'm just hitting this from all sides. Again, I can find a way to baton through this, but I think I'm gonna be able to break this. Now I'll just chop it the rest of the way. Now I wanna stand it up. I want it to be just a little bit taller than me because I don't wanna slip and fall and impale myself in the neck. You don't want it to be shorter than your head height. Just gonna find my spot and cut it here. It's cutting through the wood. 
really nicely. I should be able to just break that now. Now we just carve the end of it, make it sharp. As you can tell, this knife is digging in. It's nice and sharp. Get the end of this pointy, just so we have something to put between us and anything that might be encroaching, whether it's an animal. And again, you can just use it as a walking stick. But we're gonna bring this thing down to a point now. I'm not gonna make you watch me do this all the way to the end, but as you can tell, a good sharp knife like this can cut in and do the job a whole lot quicker. We're getting it closer. Again, this is a really nice working blade for a task like this. You don't want your point to be too thin because you don't want it to break so easily. What I have here now is something I can put between me and an animal or anyone. It's just a barrier. It's something to walk with, that's all it is. You get a good spear, it's gonna be hard for something to just walk right up on you. It's gotta walk through that spear. So you could understand how important something like this could be if you had to make a decent level trek through the woods that wasn't like really quick. If you got a leather belt with you, you do a task, take off that leather belt and just strop this thing real quick. Now, if you need this long term, I would fire harden this tip and you're just making a little fire and you're just toasting it. You're not burning the tip, you're just giving a little toast. But before you toast it, Grease up the end of this stick. You can use whatever's in your pocket. Chapstick, um, just some kind of balm, maybe lip balm. And if you don't have any of that, just use the sweat from your forehead. But grease this stick up before you toast it. It will protect the wood if you'll do that. But I've got me a nice walking companion here, courtesy of my Lothar KA-52. It handles very well. I'm not a big advocate for chopping a lot with a knife, but what you just saw is a perfect example of when I would chop with a knife. I've got nothing but a bunch of dead sticks laying around right here, so batoning was not as easy, but chopping was a good option, especially with this kind of wood. The knife just barreled right through it, and here I am with a nice little survival spear. Tip's good, which I knew it would be on this. You know, most of the time, if the tip is thick enough, it can take reasonable prying, and this does. The Lothar KA-52, ladies and gentlemen. This thing's ready to go wherever you want to go. It's very attractive and it's ready to work. I'll drop a link in the description for you to go review it, check it out. If there's any additional specs you want to look at, you can. And if you want to purchase it, have at it. You gotta love a good knife, my friend. What do you think about the Lothar KA-52? Again, I know it strongly resembles knives like the Ambulo from Odin Wolf. Reminds me a lot of the BK-18 from K-Bar, the Becker version, which that blade's a little wider, but it's still a harpoon shape. Nevertheless, thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching up with you in the next video. Take care.